It's just some uh, verses which then further strengthen our um, understanding of uh, what Ishwara is. So now we have chapter 4. It says, Yaha ekaha avarnaha bahuta shakti yoga varana anekan nihitartha dadhati vichaiti chante vishwamadocha devaha. Okay. So here he says, Yaha ekaha avarnaha bahuta shakti yoga varana aneka dadhati. So that means it says that which itself is what uh, initially undifferentiated or itself is free from any specific attribute, it as though what um, becomes many. And the process through which it uh, begins, uh, it becomes many, uh, is something that has to be in detail understood. So this morning, um, uh, in meditation, Surya um, kind of showed that kind of a each step through which so uh, the world which has so many different objects uh, they come into manifestation. So first comes what the manifestation of time. So Ishwara itself manifests in form of time. There is not one Ishwara and then second thing called time. Then that same Ishwara manifests as time space framework then within which what the most intangible, in fact, when you uh, look at the quarks and all, there are no real tangible objects. So, but those <coughs> organize and create what? Uh, particles, electron, neutron, proton. Then they organize together and create what? Elements. Uh, atoms. The atoms organize together and create what? Uh, uh, elements. The elements organize together in different permutations and combinations and make what all these, you know, all the, the entire universe. So that means at every level of organization, new attributes as though come into being. So that's why non-atoms, which are what electrons, neutrons and particles organize to create what atoms. Each of them is non-atom, but the organization becomes atom, and atom has attributes that each one of them don't. At every level of organization, it gains complexity and it gains attributes. Then the atoms organize and create uh, cells. This is what Surya was showing. So the cell, the components of cells are all non-cells, but the combination makes what cell which has different attribute than each of the component. This is how the world is. That's why you can't skip steps. If you come and you skip steps and all this, all knowledge, all the, hey, it's a, some silly uh, kind of a, the kind of a, you know, repetition without understanding anything. 
So this is why details are so important. You can't skip the details. You can't say because everything is Ishwara. Let me only think about Ishwara. Let me skip all of this. It doesn't happen like that. You have to understand the intricacies of Ishwara. So now the cells organize and create kidney. So that means each cell is not kidney. So the, ki the kidney is a function of all different cells which themselves are non-kidneys coming together and creating one added function which is a kidney and which has a very specific function. Now the kidney itself is what part of the body. So body is not kidney but body has all these different parts which includes kidney and that means that uh, uh, the body is created from what non bodies, which are what kidney, liver. <laughs> so this is how at every level, and body can create a function that what uh, only kidney cannot perform. So that means this is how at every at every step there is an assemblage, and that assemblage is a result of a lot of intelligently put together. It's not a random assemblage. And as a result of that assemblage, what is the product of that assemblage gets what value added, which the previous, the constituents don't have. So this is how the increasing complexity becomes. And what is the role of intelligence? If it became one, can it organize again to uh, create another uh, set of assemblage to create additional attribute? No. It is uninvolved. It gives rise to atom, but if it became atom, it cannot become what said. If uh, then, uh, if it becomes cell, it cannot become kidney. So that means it it is at every. Please understand. You can't say there is this form and then. Uh, down below there is intelligence. There is no such thing called down below. At every level of organization there is what? The presence of intelligence. It's pervading everything. Then, uh, so this is how, then the body is made. Then its functions are made. Then the, the, the within body what? Uh, the, the mind is made. And Surya gave an example. Mind's job is to what? have different, one of the functions of the mind is to have emotions. You can't avoid it. Why? Because this is that Ishwara's design. You can't mess with it. You only can learn how to what manage it well. If you try to eliminate, you are working against Ishwara's design. But you have to learn to what navigate intelligently so that you use these emotions, no matter what that emotion is, appropriately and don't get overwhelmed by it. This is how. So the, this is how, the, uh, as Surya was explaining, in uh, uh, the, the sadness, he gave an example of sadness. So how is sadness produced? Without neurons, without chemicals, without those electrical connections, can there be any sadness? There cannot be sadness. So that means, <laughs> The sadness feeling that I have is an assemblage of what? So many different things which are coming together to produce the experience of sadness. Can you attribute sadness to neurons? No. Because the same neurons configured differently will give you happiness. Can you attribute sadness to the chemical? No. Chemical produce, your the chemicals are essential components which because of which different different emotions are experienced. Can you attribute sadness to electronic, uh, e e electrical connections? No. And you still have what, as a result of it all coming together, you have a feeling of sadness. So that means sadness is produced by components which are free from sadness. This is how it is. Knowledge. Right? So now, those neurons themselves are what, again, you can go back. Neurons themselves are composed of things which are non neuron atoms. So that means, as it, at an increasing level of assemblage, 
you get what in uh, different different what attributes now what does the intelligence do it makes every increasing uh, level of assemblage possible and what the the as a result of that assemblage new forms come into being with special attributes that are not the part of the sum total i mean it's not in uh, any assembly uh, any component of the assemblage but the sum total brings something else so that is how everything your your emotions are made possible your body is made possible the mountains are made possible the rivers are made possible he made you see that in meditation and this goes on beyond the human body obviously oh obviously yeah. of course so also the humans are part of something bigger yes. yeah absolutely and which is ishwara no? we are not uh, having this function what the higher function has we are part of a bigger thing but that, what does this bigger thing do then that's what i'm saying the bigger thing is what we call ishwara no and then we are already at ishwara level so that means ishwara is at the every level of what every level of permutation and combination uh, which are arrangement every level of arrangement see generally our understanding of ishwara is it's below everything what i want to show you is it is at every level of arrangement every level of arrangement cannot happen without ishwara but ishwara is free from attributes which are gained as a result of assemblage at uh, every level that's what i want to demonstrate okay. what is bringing is that now we are above individual then you have groups societies then you have the earth then you have the solar system you have yes. the whole but there also so that's why he also showed stars for example mm. So it's our uh, first. He showed human body. First, he started with a tree and show how it is the result of assemblage. Then he uh, took a human body and he showed you how it is a result of assemblage. Then he uh, showed uh, the, the emotion sadness and then he also showed how it is a result of so many different assemblages put together. Then he showed a star, far away star. and that also is a result of this assemblage then he showed a, a river so this is how he made you see anything that is there there is what a very active work of ishwara every level of assemblage is ishwara not down below so this is what yeah so that means here what it is saying is this intelligence being free from what every uh, form and the assemblage and the product of that assemblage itself is free but because of which everything takes place every assemblage so this is how itself remains attributeless but it as though gains what multiple attributes so this is uh, what one has to understand Otherwise, and at every, and every level, the attribute, one of the attributes gets shows up. The other gets blocked for yeah, every function. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that is what we call Maya. Maya also says that we can say Maya. Wonderful. Really? Something manifests, the other remains blocked. Then at some other point, the other becomes manifest. Still, so many other things remain blocked. Absolutely. So. This is how the whole uh, Ishvara. So that's why when Ish, then when in Bhagavad Gita it is said that what uh, Ishvara he says, I am everything. Everything is in me, but I am not anything. We just repeat like a parrot. Oh, everything is in Ishvara, but Ishvara is not in. Hey, this is what it means. Demonstration of how it is so. These are not just sentences which oh yeah Bhagwan is saying that you know we all get emotional about it and we don't use our intellect to understand what it means. So that means the whole Vedanta Shastra is to be uh, it is a means of knowledge. It has to be taken as means of knowledge. Means of knowledge means these words have to produce their meaning. <laughs> the words will go the words can never remain forever please understand how the words work you 
as a result of listening, some what thoughts are taking place in your mind. Are you going to be stuck with those thoughts? No. Thoughts have to go. Like every thought has to go. But the meanings that are created by the thoughts stay. Thoughts don't stay. This is why it is not a matter of repeating, I'm limitless, I'm limitless, I'm limitless. Because you can keep on saying it actively in your mind and the meaning can still escape you. But once you have understood, you have no need to repeat it. Because it has created its meaning. Having created the meaning, it has gone. It has done its job, it's gone. Every knowledge is like that. When any knowledge took place, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Do you need to keep on repeating every minute 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4? You will go mad. You will never be able to learn anything else. Because you have to keep on repeating that. Once 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, that has given rise to the meaning in your mind. That 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, the active thought goes away. What remains? Its meaning. Its meaning remains. You don't need to, it is not a matter of you hold on, you try to hold on to the thought which gives you knowledge, you are gone. That shows non-understanding. The thoughts come, they go, they create meanings. If you have understood the meaning, the meanings remain with you, the thoughts go. This is why any time at your will, you can bring back this knowledge. Because the meaning doesn't go, so therefore it can, comes back again. And it can be expressed differently. It can be expressed differently. Nowadays, they have new methods of teaching mathematics. They said most of the time, kids have a lot of difficulty in learning mathematics. Why do they have difficulty in learning mathematics? Because everything is like, you know, you build, you, you see all these signs and these formulas. These formulas don't convey anything to the child. It becomes all abstract. So you, you can't hold on to anything tangible to learn it. And that means you haven't understood one formula and the next formula is built on this formula. You haven't even understood this. So what will happen? There is a whole big building up and you haven't even understood this. Now what everything above that will go what above your head. This is the problem with mathematics. People can't get because people's minds are unable to reach. Then, now they said, but mathematics is something which is in everything. I had a, 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 one, a, there was a management consultant. Uh, no, not management consultant, sorry. I, I was working uh, in Fiji. And one of my colleagues, uh, who was a New Zealander, his wife was a school teacher and she was teaching mathematics. And uh, so she says, now they understand the difficulty. You know, these are what they are constantly evolving their teaching methods to communicate to others what they intend to communicate. So she says, this, uh, the, the way mathematics is taught, it is incomprehensible. Uh, by uh, kids. It's not possible. Because their minds have not yet developed to uh, understand abstract thinking and so much abstract, uh, abstract, abstraction is um, uh, involved in mathematics. So now she's changing. So they say they don't write on the board, they make you uh, uh, use the universe to see mathematical patterns. So that means you are given, uh, if uh, starting from 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, instead of writing on board 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, the child doesn't know what it means. You are given two apples and then you are about given two more apples. Then you are told to count how many there are. So that means from abstraction, what are they doing? 
concrete. There, it's talking about some tangible realities. It's not talking about some abstract things. And this is how every additional thing is built up. Because she said mathematics is in everything. You study a mortar, there are patterns. This is what we call, and that can be what H2O. So that means there is a pattern there. So that is mathematics. In music, there is mathematics. In, um, when you draw things, we think that it is arts, it's actually mathematics. You need to be very uh, aware of the space and that the, every, every picture, the proportion of that with reference to everything. Your mind is actually working out a lot of mathematics to come up with those images. It seems like art, but it's actually implicit use of mathematics. So that means if mathematics is taught like that, people's relationship with mathematics will change. They won't be afraid. They will be fascinated by mathematics. The underlying patterns which are there in the universe. Not some abstract ideas. So this is how you have to understand Ishwara. Underlying patterns. The intelligence. Patterns within patterns, within patterns, within patterns, which give rise to infinite forms. Itself cannot be any one thing. Why? Because if it is one thing, it will not become, it cannot have the potential to become the other, free from it. So this is what, here it is said, that that which has no attributes, but it also has Shakti. What is his Shakti? The Shakti as a result of assemblage to create an, a product of assemblage which has what additional attributes than the what each one which is a constituent <coughs> of that uh, form. That is Shakti. Don't think there is some Shakti out there and all. <laughs> In everything there is Shakti. One hydrogen atom is not water. Second hydrogen atom is also not water. One oxygen atom is also not water. When three come together, then it has, it assumes an additional attribute which is water. Assemblage. This is what we mean by assemblage. So this is how it is. So that is what we call, but that the, the intelligence which is, even the hydrogen doesn't have what the attribute of water, what to talk of intelligence which assembles them to make water what it is. It doesn't take on any attribute. If it took on, if it became water, then when you add one more oxygen uh, atom, what it should become H2O2. That is something totally different. It is hydrogen peroxide. Peroxide. So that means every level of assemblage, it makes different products possible. Itself is free from everything. So this is what is said that it is avarnaha, but because of that shakti, it has a power to manifest a form with that given function. So it makes what Aneka Varna, makes many, many, many different forms in this universe. Okay, so that is now um, the only, uh, uh, so that means in that thing, um, so you, uh, if you ask the question, why is it doing it? That's super unscrutable, that's what is it. Exactly. Hey, why, why not? I'll ask you why not. Why two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom makes water? Why not uh, something else? <coughs> that if that it was something else you ask, but why not that? Hey, it, it goes on. Water is H2O and in that H2O there is intelligence which has never become anything. That is answer. The minute you know the reality, you stop asking wrong questions. The, the non-understanding of the reality makes you ask wrong questions. 
the intelligence has never actually undergone any change. I mean, undergone means it has never become water. It has assembled two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen atom. But it has never become water. The intelligence is free from what any, uh, any attribute. If it is free from attribute, you can't ask, if you really understand that, you can't ask then why is it doing it? Wrong question. Swamiji said, Vedanta has answers for right questions. Every right questions. If you ask a wrong question, any teacher who is a wise teacher will not even attempt to answer it. Why? Will make you see how this question is based on non-understanding rather than uh, entering into a wrong question and attempting to answer it. Right questions, all answers. Wrong questions which are coming from non-understanding of reality, you can't attempt to answer, you have to show them the reality. In, in, in the understanding of that reality, the question disappears. This is how it is. So therefore, there is only one thing where some intention has been what talked about in Taitriya Upanishad on part of Ishwara. So here, before the manifestation, Ishwara is there as Maya and it says, Bahusyam Praja Yeheti Satapor Tapyata Satapas Tattva So that means that let me be many. So that means having manifested it entered into it became many. But after that there is no so that means there is a potential and that potential what actually is collapsed to become the whole universe. After the whole universe is created, there is no more intention. Intention means it's not like, oh, I want Pankaj to be like this and I want Rajan to be like that. It is only the forms. What is set up? Manif in manifestation, what is set up? Tell me. The objects are set up. The forms which are interacting with objects are set up. Their ranges are set up. The laws are set up. <coughs> and the, uh, the uh, connection of forms to the laws is set up. Cause and effect. Cause and effect. At multiple levels. Physical level, biological level, physiological level, psychological level, the karma, everything. Then, you, uh, some, some, some entities are given free will. The others are what mostly both are. Now the entities which are given free will, they are given what, uh, certain understanding to guide their free will. What is certain understanding? The law of God. And then they are also given freedom to engage in the world as they want. Either you are given, you are given the knowledge of dharma, but you are given what the freedom to disregard dharma. Why? This is how it is. Why? Hey, right now, you don't need to ask why. Right now I have a choice. I can use this glass either to see it or I can use this glass out of my anger and what? Throw it, fling it and hurt somebody. I have a choice. Right now. This is how the creation is. Now, within this creation, uh, if you were stuck in this creation, then it is what? In that creation, the key to the creation is also given. So that means either you can use your 
free will to follow dharma and do all the th be sensitive about not hurting others or you can use your free will to ask a question that is hey, by doing the same thing over and over and over again and coming back all over again and experiencing karma phala all over again what am i actually gaining that also you have got the free will to ask that question it you have you have a free will it means not everybody collapses that free this is why many people when they come to vedanta oh vedanta should you know why isn't vedanta taught by everyone uh, to everyone hey you have to use your free will to come to vedanta it is taught there is no restriction nobody is told you don't come but if you don't come then so this is how the free will has to be used to what ask that question and to search for an answer to that question free will is given then free will is also if you really go in your pursuit free will is also given uh, uh, to what understand who is giving me right answer and who is not giving me right answer you can use it we don't collapse it we have get all emotionally attached to all vacos <clears throat> free will is given it is a failure you can't blame the other person it is your failure to what see through <clears throat> it is my i have to take responsibility because the person can say what that person wants to say i have accepted whatever the person says that is what the failure of my free will and it's okay no problem this is how we learn so you have to take responsibility for it and free yourself from the guilt this is what surya was saying free will is also given to build on the knowledge until the time that what you get the whole reality so that means you can completely remove ignorance and come to know the truth of what is ishvara which is attributeless which is the one which is what gather uh, assembling things without becoming anything and the truth of ishvara which is what consciousness which has never moved is something which has never moved if i understand how can i ask the question why it has become everything the question shows no understanding that means you haven't followed if i have understood something is not changing i can't ask the question why did it make that why did it make that the question the what implies that the person there is an intention which i'm showing you there is none and something which has no attribute and there is no kartrutvam you are attributing that means listen to shastra again and try to understand what is being said this is the answer and i need a clarification because you were saying in the tapia of the shastra there was an intention let me be man yeah so that oh, means oh. it is only it is only means that there is only one thing there is one of the things that happens which is from unmanifest to manifest that is there is an intention no that is the nature of ishvara that is the nature of ishvara it has the it capacity is it is the expression it is the expression it is the expression to Because show that there the is intention. something yeah so that means it is said as an intention but it is has to be understood as nature of ishvara. more to say that because it bahusyam prajayi yeti that is a sentence in taitriya upanishad let me be many this is how it is expressed bahusyam prajayi yeti let me become many it's almost that like is, because because you can see that ishwara has become exactly, many exactly you are kind of putting it as an intention exactly but it it's is only representation it is only represent. representation exactly this is why 
See, if you use only Vachyartha to understand the Upanishad, you get, you don't, uh, as gold, I mean, the literal translation is what boom. Actually, it's not boom. even egg, it's a boom, golden boom. What? So that, so I, you need to have a whole methodology. So that means that it is explaining one thing. It is not just used to misguide you. It is used to show what the thing from unmanifest to manifestation. And that is the nature of Ishana, from unmanifest to manifest. And that Ishwara's nature which is there is also now. The moment that is manifest now has to go and it has to become unmanifest. If it was only then, then it becomes what matter of belief. But because it is also now, you what? It's a matter of understanding. That's why everything that is talked about, whatever that you need to understand, please understand. Whatever you need to understand Vedanta, everything is given to you. Everything is given to you. You need to collapse that to help yourself and understand it. Whatever is being talked about, even though it was before, it is also now. That intelligence which was there, which was before manifestation is also right now. That's why we demonstrate the manifest and unmanifest uh, capacity which was there then is also now. The presence of consciousness which is the truth of that intelligence is also now. Whatever you need to understand this is given now. That's why it's knowledge, it's not belief. And you have to use pramana to see it for yourself. It's not like, yeah, it's, it's not like, you know, you sit in some class and they show you some logic about something. And you said, yeah, it makes sense. That means you still remain here and you just understand it as subject matter. This is not what Vedanta is. Vedanta is where you have, you have to see how everything is what Vedanta. You have to use the words to see this is how things are. This is what we call pramana operation. Use it because without using it, you your understanding of world is going to be different from what the real world is. So this is what it says. Now, in um, <clears throat> now the other thing previously, the next verse. Let's move to the next verse. The next verse is, now, before, uh, which one, one given representation was chosen, which was what? Rudra. Rudra is the destructive force. Now, <coughs> so that you are not stuck saying that you are like Ayangars and Ayers. They are stuck. That Rudra, <coughs> Shiva is the biggest deity and for Ayangars it is Vishnu which is the big deity. So they keep having fights. Who is bigger? So this, uh, this Ayangars, they don't even uh, use the word Shakara because in that Shakara comes what the first letter of Shiva. Oh my God. Yeah. It's so scary. Yeah. <laughs> so. Not all Ayangars. But, uh, <laughs> but it is, this is how it is. And then they do it. So they, instead of Sha, they'll say Sa. He's higher. You're not higher. You're not higher? Oh my god. He's a bigger. That's why he's not all Aingas. Not the Veda, Alpin Aingas. Yeah, not the Veda. So that means, see, this is the level of where we get stuck. And these are all bright people. They're not like, they're all mathematicians. This Tam Brahms are considered to be one of the, they have genes which are like genius genes. Uh, but still they get stuck here, imagine. In such a, such a non-issue, they make it like they, they live their life by it. The power of ignorance. 
That's why you have no choice but to remove ignorance. You can get stuck without your knowing it and commit your life to it. So therefore, now in order not to do that, here again it says, this Ishvara is not just Rudra, it is what? Tat eva agnihi, tat eva adityaha, tat eva mayuhu, tat chandrama, tat eva shukram, tat brahma. That upa, upastasya prajapati. So that means that which was the Rudra, that Ishvara which manifests as Rudra, the destructive force, also is Ishvara which manifests as Agni, the fire. Also sun. Also, also Aditya, also the sun. Also what? Vayu, the wind. Then also Chandrama, the moon. Then, that, uh, so that alone is the stars. And that alone is what, uh, it is Hiranyagarbha and it is Virat. Prajapati means uh, this Brahmaji. So that means the same force which is uh, one of the manifestation of Ishvara is what destruction. The other is what uh, the uh, creation. The other one is what? Sustainers. These are all manifestations of what? Ishvara. And not only that, then there are manifestations which is what? Sun and the moon. Then there are manifestations which are what? Five elements. Prajapati, what is Prajapati? Prajapati means the creator. Prajapati, the lord of the Prajapati. Praja. Oh, Praja is what is people, what is Jayati, which is yeah. like manifesting, Still. coming into being. Yeah. Oh, the Lord of the ones who bring that yes. yeah. Yeah. So that means we have to understand anything that you see in this creation is manifestation. Not only the forms are manifestation of the uh, Ishvara, also the forces are heavenly bodies are manifestation of Ishvara. The forces of the universe are manifestation of Ishvara. And Ishvara is what essentially none of them. It's just the intelligence which is making all of this possible. It by its own definition it always remains what? While uh, becoming Rudra from its own standpoint it remains what? Sarvajnaha Sarvashat. While manifesting as the sun, which performs a given function of providing life, it from its own standpoint remains what? Sarvadnaha Sarvashatima. So that means the functions, as I told you, as Surya just explained in meditation, are a result of what? Assemblage. Different assemblage. And what, who somebody said that in that assemblage, when it manifests as sun, the potential for being a moon is what? Block. Block. When it manifests as the moon, the potential for being a, the uh, a sun is blocked. This is what uh, uh, Lutz was asking. <coughs> so that means that this is how it is. Assemblage, some things manifest, some things are blocked. All are a possibility. So this is Ishwara. The whole creation is created like that. Manifestation is a result of this work of intelligence. And every object that is created is not just, oh yeah, I felt like doing it. It has a given form, it has a given name, and it has a function. So it may seem as though the uh, activities where uh, the, the, the stars are colliding with each other and creating, uh, you know, th that millions of years ago is irrelevant. Why, why is that happening? What is it doing in that Chinese video? Hey, and that activity was essential for me to have iron in my body today, which is making all the functions. This is how. What is the sun?